The Committee for National Morale came together in 1941. They were led by an art historian, and they included 60 of America's very best social scientists, people like Margaret Mead, Gregory Bateson, psychologists like Gordon Allport, and they came together to solve a problem. Americans believed at the time that fascism had arisen in Europe because mass media had literally made audiences authoritarian. And now we were about to enter World War I, World War II, and we were trying to figure out how can we make media that will give us the morale to fight the Germans and to fight fascism without making us authoritarian citizens. So the committee came together to figure that out. The Committee for National Morale had a theory that we could just build multimedia images all around us or sounds that could then give us the practice of perception and we could practice choosing and being free in our choices. But they didn't know how to make media. Uh, they were sociologists, they were psychologists. Lucky for them, in 1937, a group of Bauhaus artists came from Germany to New York. Um, Moholy Nagy came through, Walter Gropius came through, and most importantly, Herbert Beyer came through. Herbert Beyer was an exhibition designer and he had a theory of multi-image environments which served their vision very well. This is a really, really important question. We often think that any media that are around us immerse us. But immersion is exactly what the Committee for National Morale and the Bauhaus theorists did not want. What they wanted was people to have images all around them, but for them to be able to choose which images were most meaningful to them. In this way, the Bauhaus people thought they could build a whole psyche, and the Committee for National Morale thought they could build an American psyche. They thought they could build a democratic personality, a personality that liked different images and that was able to live by choosing, not by obeying. That was the key difference. The immersive environment they feared was something more like cinema or more like music through the radio. They feared that when a person was immersed, they stopped thinking and they felt, felt only a desire to follow. The idea of the surround is an environment of maximum choice. Now, of course, 50 years later, we might be talking about a supermarket, but not then. And I think one of the things that's most interesting about the book is that it talks about a time when the surround and immersive media are going head to head. And we see that again today. You know, virtual reality is becoming something very common in the United States right now. It's suddenly cheap, available, and we need a language to think about the difference between media that let us select our experience. Just and like hypertext. Just like hypertext. And media that, in fact, dominate our experience. Just like video games. Just like video Well, video games are perhaps virtual reality. Absolutely. Mm. You know, systems that we lock into as opposed to systems that help us open up and open out. Mm.